Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 10 now, and we're going to just take again one verse today, verse 2. Uh, we have gone through the first six plagues, seven plagues or so, and and we're just on the point of the next plague, but let's look at what's going on here. All right, verse 2, and I read it. And that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your grandson how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and how I performed my signs among them, that you may know that I am the Lord. So I want you to notice something here. The experience of the Exodus here is intended by God to be kind of an identity baseline, not just for Israelis, not just for Hebrew people. For every person who is a child of Abraham by faith, that is by every Christian person, right? God's design is that, that we would identify with their history. Their history uh, does not become our history in a, a uh, fake way. Their history becomes our history in a real way because we're adopted into God's family. And so then the history, the experience of his people becomes our experience in the most literal and actual way. We shouldn't be looking at the Exodus, the 10 plagues, and all the businesses that we're going to continue here as we go through the entire book of Exodus. We shouldn't be looking at this as some kind of um, uh, curiosity. We're doing this because it's, it's sort of interesting. It's kind of like watching a documentary about some weird other people that are kind of... No, this... Friend, this is about you and I. If you're a believer in Jesus, if you're a believer in, in the God um, the, of the Hebrews, Yahweh, if you're a believer in him, this is about you and my, this is about our history, this is about us, okay? So our identity is we're real Christian people. The history of the people of God is our history. It's not like symbolic of our history. It is our history, okay? So God's intention is that we will look back at the deliverance of the Hebrew people from oppression in Egypt, and we will lay claim to that. That's now part of my life, part of my history. This is who I am. I look back to that, and, and I, my ancestors were slaves in Egypt. They were delivered from that forced labor. God delivered them by his mighty hand. My God delivered my ancestors by his mighty hand, and that's who I am. I am a son of that. I am a yeah, a few steps removed, and by faith, but but truly, literally grafted in to that. That's what God wants. God is, is claiming me. If I were a Hebrew person in Egypt way back then, in the times we're reading about, God would be literally delivering me. He loves me enough to deliver me from bondage, the bondage of Egypt. And he loves me today, in the 2020s, he loves me enough to deliver me from the bondages that we have in our life and in our culture uh, today. So God is the deliverer of those in bondage. Now it says here in the text that you may tell in the hearing of your son and your grandson how I did this and so on. So this is something to be retold. The, the history of the Exodus is my history. The history of the Exodus is, is how we were delivered from bondage. And as Christians, it, it gives us kind of a peace. Uh, we should claim that. We should remember that's talking about us. The family is the most fundamental unit uh, God designed. When you have a husband and a wife, you have a family. When you have a husband and a wife and a child or more children, you, you still have a family. Family is a very essential building block. When God made the Garden of Eden on day six, he made humans, Adam and Eve. And what did he make on day six? Boom, family. So family is critical, and the family is to have a, an identity of being God's people. And here we see in verse 2, I want you to tell this to your children. It's to be transmitted. No, we're not supposed to send our children into a, in a yellow uh, tin can to the state school and have them receive programming and be told things that are contrary to God, LGBTQ, and, and every other thing that's, that's erroneous, uh, evolution. And, and, and to have your kid, be, that's like sending your kid to Egyptian University or Babylon University. So, yeah, a lot of us grew up in that. I grew up in the state schools, just like perhaps most of you did. But God's plan is really that we would, we would transmit the faith to a younger generation. Right now, we're having some trouble because the family is, is really under assault. But here we see in Exodus that even while the families were so disrupted by Egyptian forced labor upon them, God still, the family was still central, uh, fundamental, and basic, and we should see to it 
that we are transmitting our faith values to our young people. Uh, they're going to need it. They're urgently going to need it as they go through life. So to summarize here then, the family unit is a, the, and the identity is being uh, delivered from Egypt. This is a fundamental transgenerational piece of identity that we as believers should transmit from generation to generation. There are some people who think about things, all things Hebrew, and they kind of put that in kind of like a little box. This is kind of an embarrassment box. We don't, uh, we're not kind of not those people. We're somebody else. We're kind of a, a better people than that. That's a big mistake. That's a big mistake. The lessons that, uh, that we learn from them are our lessons. The history of the, them is the history of us. Uh, they are not like the inferior to us and we're superior to them because what? Because you've got a phone that, that runs out of energy on a battery. The history of God's people is at the baseline here is my history. I've chosen this identity. God made it possible for me to choose it. And what a precious, unspeakable, precious privilege it is to be a child of the King. May God bless us and help us to transmit the faith to our young people in spite of all the nonsense that's, that's always incoming. See you tomorrow morning.